singing holy holy Yahweh almighty we're singing holy Thank you so much for tuning in and being with us, and we pray that you enjoy tonight's broadcast. Hallelujah. All right, still waiting on your numbers, so hopefully you can hear us and hear us well. Uh, yep, got some tens. Thank you, Sister Melissa and Sister Sonisha. Bless you, tens for both ten and ten. Thank you. Hallelujah. Just a couple of shout-outs. I only had one sister um, on my mind strongly, as many of you are always, always on my mind. I had Sister Rachel in, in my heart and in my mind. She's doing really well. Obviously, a great step in her life and in her faith to, uh, you know, to uproot from Texas, a family that she was accustomed to and used to, a home, uh, you know, everything that she had ever known being in Texas, and coming up here to the the faith and the assembly and ministry here at uh, Straightway in Lafayette, Tennessee. So, shout out to you, Sister Rachel. You're doing really well, and uh, very, always encouraged to see you. And, uh, you know, she's a, she's a great help with Lil' Tora. We'll be playing together, me, Zeph, and Rachel Tora. Love to have Tora around. Um, so just really appreciate all that you do, Sister Rachel. And who's on your heart, Sister Jennifer? Anyone? I want to give a shout-out to Sister Carolina. I'm such a beautiful daughter of Zion. I miss you, Sister Carolina. Um, just such a mature wife in Israel, a mature young wife. 
And um, I just appreciate the honesty that she shows with herself and the love that she has for the Father. So bless you, Sister Carolina. I love you very much, and we miss you. Absolutely. Very good word. Um, Pastor's even brought it up in the past few weeks, maturity. Um, Very good word said about you, Sister Rachel, so keep it up. I'm sorry, Sister Carolina, so keep it up. Um, I hope you got the information, Sister Jennifer. We spoke earlier. Jennifer knew how to get what you need if you are close to Kansas City. A uh, special shout-out to Pastor Pastor uh, Corey and all his group out there, all you daughters of Zion and sisters that support him in righteousness and that obey him and follow him as he follows the Messiah. You have an exciting weekend coming up. Please give uh, those details, Sister Jennifer, if you got them. Yes, ma'am. Um, the Kansas City um, Saints are actually hosting a healing and deliverance service, and that will be held on Saturday, November 14th, 2015, from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m., and it will be located at the Overland Park Convention Center, 6000 College Boulevard, Overland Park, and it's actually courtroom number four. So this event, again, is being hosted by Straightway Kansas City. So if you're near the area, please show your support and just come and get set free. Absolutely, and uh, Brother Jesus is coming by. Uh, Angelica used a funny word earlier, doing a drive-by here at Straightway, because he stopped here for a couple of days, and then he's headed out to Kansas City to support that crew. So uh, another shout-out to Sister Angelica, who is uh, uh, developing greatly and largely as her child grows, and we're just waiting any minute, any day, any week um, for her child to come forth. Please, sisters, remember to pray for all those who uh, have conceived, um, Pray for all those who are barren, all those who desire seed. Uh, Uplift those in your hearts and your mind as they um, bring them forth. Um, There is going to be pain. There's going to be travail. But we pray that that Yah has his hand in every delivery as well as on the hand of every midwife. Uh, Sister Heather being ours here and any of you out there who's up and coming, such as uh, Sister Allison, Sister Candace, those who have the heart and desire to to really, um, you know, be better or be used in that area. Thank each and every one of you. Um, I'm going to play Sister Wenda to start off with, just a little ministry information for anyone who's new. I always like to do that. So bless you in Canada, all of you in Canada, and thank you for our ministry break. And I will play it now. We'll come back shortly, Sister Jennifer. Shalom. This is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying this particular broadcast that we're listening to right now. We really appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure we do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you'd like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr., 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. That's 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. PMB number one. Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L A F A Y E T T E, Tennessee. 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. You may leave a message there, and be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. And do please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom. The King is coming. The King is coming. Right? So we're in a season of purification, sanctification, and a really great message that came forth, uh, scripture study, Um, self-confidence, self-esteem, self-assurance. Right? So that might come up throughout tonight's show. 
But really, we had, we had some more, Jennifer and I had some things on our heart we wanted to talk about concerning, yes, deliverance, yes, spirits, always, um, but maybe just bringing out some of the fruits of, of rejection, some of the fruits of pride on tonight's show, uh, even speaking about false humility, just so that you can recognize these things within yourself. Remember, we don't come before you ever with someone in our minds and in our hearts that we're speaking to. We're speaking in a broad uh, realm. And we're talking to each and every one of you because we have done a um, self-evaluation. I wish I could pull up the word pastor used. I liked it. So, uh, I don't remember. I'll think of it tonight. But anyway, self-evaluation. So, we're going to talk about rejection, sisters. And, I mean, which one of us, none, that's the answer, which one of us has not been touched by this spirit? Zero. Zero that I know of. So I think about the overwhelming rejection buried in the hearts of sisters, myself included early on in the faith. And I think about the amount of you and the amount of us, where are we, where are us, that has actually overcome it. And it's a very small, small number. You don't see a lot of sisters walking in complete freedom from the Spirit. And, you know, complete freedom from the Spirit doesn't mean you won't hear its voice. It means you come to a certain level of maturity and a certain level of strength in the Spirit to begin and always be able to cast the voice of rejection down. So with that said, Sister Jennifer, I wanted to bring up this thought, and I'm going to ask you a question How much, sisters, would we all, or how much would you actually fight and resist the spirit of rejection if you actually considered it pride? Now, think about that question because when we are in a spirit of rejection, we're self-defeated. We're depressed. There's many Negative emotions, as pastors brought out, evil emotions, sorrow, ill will, things that come with rejection. But wouldn't you fight it a lot harder in your spirit and in your mind if you knew that the rejection you were dealing with is actually your own pride? And how could I make that link? How could I say that those two were interlinked or intertwined? Because I used to say they kind of, you know, rejection and pride kind of walk hand in hand. That's what I used to say. But as I as I further mature into um, deliverance, into uh, self-evaluation, I understand that the rejection battle is actually a reflection of you, you, and you, and only you, which is pride. Excluding the fact that, yes, you may be an abandoned, neglected, orphaned, molested, there's many reasons that you would have the spirit of rejection without a form of pride. But 90%, if I can throw a number out there, and Jennifer's going to say a few words after me, 90% of the time, let's just guess that number, you're actually reflecting on you and only you, and you're in a state of self-pity, Because someone has done something to you, this person did this to me, he said it to me, my husband, everyone's against you, you, you. So you're actually in a state of self-exaltation. So tonight we're going to talk about pride and false humility, but never forgetting rejection. Never forgetting the term rejection. Sister Jennifer, let me ask you something, and please say anything and everything that is on your mind according to what I've already stated because I might be jumping ahead of you, but in order to overcome rejection completely because there's not many of all of us that ever has, in order to completely overcome it, what is the key factor? I mean, what are we missing? Is it time that it takes? Sister Jennifer, what say you? No, ma'am. I don't believe it's time. Um, I believe that we have... Plenty of time. We have had plenty of time. And, you know, exactly what was pointed out in Scripture study, when you walk in condemnation, you do nothing. You know, so it's like we have this time, but we're walking in condemnation. 
And so we we don't do anything about it, but we just wallow in our condemnation. But when we have conviction, we actually change. So what's needed is conviction. What's needed is godly sorrow. And, um, you know, you touched on depression. I just wanted to say that rejection is actually a doorway to depression. It leads to depression. It opens the door because you're so absorbed within yourself. You're so absorbed about yourself. And that is what um, depression is, the root of depression. You're always thinking about your own woes, your own sorrows. But once you get your mind off of yourself, your situations, and you start um, focusing on Yah, you start focusing on your sisters, you start praying for your sisters, it kind of gets you out of that. So, no, we don't need more time. We we need to be wise with our time, yes. We we actually need conviction and we need godly sorrow because, you know, again, we are our greatest hindrance and we have to realize that we cannot we cannot escape from us. You know, we can escape from everybody else. We can hide. But once you get away, that old you is still there. So, no, we don't need more time. We need conviction. Hallelujah, which is actually really promising when you when you think about it because some of you sisters may have the voice that says, wow, I got so far to go to catch up. Uh, you know, do I even have the time that some of these other sisters have had to try to get as far along as they've gotten? It's not time that you actually need, right? She has some really good sound words. So denying self the right to dwell on self will help you overcome rejection. When you gain a strength about you that doesn't allow you to have a pity party, about what everybody else has done to you, it's going to help you overcome. And you know what? This is kind of painful if you're in the state of rejection because I understand the workings of that spirit, at least from my own experience, not yours and not your circumstance, but my own experience. So I understand the grip that rejection truly has upon a sister or a woman's mind. It's very, very strong. But I think if you can begin... I don't think, I know, if you can begin to destroy pride within you, you will overcome rejection. Remember that. It's a, it's an important key that actually early on I didn't have that understanding as I just pressed forward to fight against rejection and I'm overcoming in great leaps and bounds and not bothered by it. In a sense that, does the voice present itself to me? Yes, I don't come before you as a arrival. I come before you as an overcomer, knowing that, I overcome him through the blood of Jesus, right? I overcome my enemy through the blood of Jesus. So you want to deny yourself the right to dwell on self, and it truly helps you through a lot of battles. It gives you self-confidence, self-esteem, self-assurance when you don't dwell on the old you or the rejected you. And a, a word that I share with a great friend of mine, a great sister of mine, I talk to her about commitment. She knows who she is. No one else knows who you are. My sister, smile. I talk to her about commitment because you know what? Commitment to this way, sisters, commitment to the one true and only way of the living Yah, the Father of all things, commitment to Him actually gives you self-confidence, self-esteem, and self-assurance. Commitment to Him. There's no other way. There's no other faith. There's nowhere to go. So when you're truly committed unto Yah, you can't fail. Even if you fall, you can't fail. You're completely committed. Right? So let's move on, Sister Jennifer. I wanted to, I had another great sister and friend of mine ask me a question. She knows who she is that sparked this whole show. Because it was a good question, and I like to go off of the questions and feedback from I hear that I hear from the sisters, knowing that if one of you thinks it, more of you think it, because we're all common, or all things are common in us. But she said, so what is false humility? I said, ah, good question. I'll save it. I'll save it for the show. Just because at the time when she asked me, I could probably simply answer it, or with simplicity answer it, but I really wanted to cover it in a, in a, in a good way, or at least a vast way, um, going back and forth with Jennifer and I, so that maybe she could get the true answer that she needs, and all of you will get the answer that you need. What is false humility? What would you tell someone if they asked you that? Right? So let's talk about that for a moment. 
You ready, Sister Jennifer? Can we move on? Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. All right. So the scriptures teach. Let's start out really, really slow, okay? For any of you who take notes, or or to, for y'all who hear slow, or write slow, or listen slow, let's start off slow, Sister Jennifer. But let's say, you know, the scriptures teach, and the Torah teaches about falsehoods. You know, it talks about uh, do not bear false witness, um, don't raise a false report. It talks about a false balance not being good. It talks about staying away from false matters, hate every false way. There will be false teachers, false oaths, false bur- uh, burdens, false brothers, false apostles, false prophets, right? So you're getting my gist. There's a lot of false ways that we need to deny and stay away from, that we are warned about. So if we could go to a scripture first, Sister Jennifer, could you read for me Colossians 2, verse 18? Um, I hope to speak slow enough, sisters, to answer this question for you, each of you, what is false humility, but also to bring out some of the fruit um, of pride, because that's kind of where we're going. Go ahead when you're ready, sister. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up, by his fleshly mind. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Jennifer, what do you think about when you read that scripture, if anything? You know, we always talk about, or Pastor always mentions, uh, having a high and lofty opinion of yourself. And that's exactly what I think of when I read that. You know, vainly, I'm, I'm vainly puffed up in my mind because I have such a high opinion of myself and this humility that I may think I have, I really don't have. So that's what comes to mind when I read that. Good good words because a high opinion of self can either appear to be obvious, you can see someone and automatically even the world can acknowledge that some particular men, women, whoever it may be, they have some pride about them. But what about that non-obvious humility? It's kind of what we're talking about in the realm of false humility because it's a humility that manifests in pride. It's often a secret desire for attention where, like Jennifer said, you're exalting self. You have a high opinion of self. It can even be silence in character that actually doesn't express or communicate truthfulness. Once again, going back to our thoughts a couple of shows ago, bound emotions. So when you're unable to express or communicate truthfulness, but you're exemplifying what you feel to be humility, you can actually have pride bound within you. False humility is bound pride. So to understand pride or false humility, let's check out humility first. Let's start with humility, the virtue that each of us need and wants. First Peter five five, please, Sister Jennifer. First Peter five five. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For Yah resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Clothed with humility. I like that. Right? That's what we desire, right, sisters? Each of us, we want to be clothed with humility. We don't want our humility to be false or to be suspect in Yahweh's eyes. We want the real thing. So when I looked up humility, at least in my Strong's, because there's various um, um, various definitions. I noticed even the Strong's that I have in here on my ESORD program is even different tonight. But I really like what this says. Check it out. The Greek word was number 5012, so 5012, Greek number 5012. It talks about humiliation of mind. That's the word it's saying, cold with humility, humiliation of mind. Here I go. I'm going to speak slow. Check this out. A virtue that exists when a person through most genuine self-evaluation deems himself worthless. Again, a virtue that exists when a person through most genuine self-evaluation deems himself worthless. The absolute opposite of a high opinion of yourself. 
it goes on to say, and the last sentence is, a state of absolute dependence. A state of absolute dependence. Very interesting. Because we're in an independent world, Sister Jennifer. Let's let's go to a let's go to a quote from Paul or or a, a verse from Paul. Acts twenty verse uh, nineteen. Let's stick with the thought that this is a virtue that exists when a person through most genuine self evaluation deems himself worthless. You are worthless, you are nothing, not rejected. You're just a servant. We're gonna get there. Worthless. A state of absolute dependence of Yahweh. Acts twenty nineteen. Go when you're ready. Serving Yahweh with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. Serve Yahweh with all humility of mind. Humility of mind. It was a, or it is a, characteristic and virtue of the mind. Not an outward adorning, which we know that. But not an outward way about you, not an outward way you uh, carry yourself. It's a, it's a, a state of mind. You know, uh, Sister Erica in Texas comes to mind because because she has humility and a great level of humility. It's a state of mind that she actually operates in. It's not a falsehood. It's just she would have the same respect for Jennifer as she would Angelica, as she would Pastor, as she would me because she's humble. I had um, I had asked. Toma and Toma had asked Sister Barb, and we went in this circle of trying to find a particular preaching that Elder Becker had um, had put forth. Because I didn't know the date, Toma didn't know the date, um, and, and Toma's the one that actually brought it to my attention when we talked about this briefly in the kitchen the other day. So, with all that said, just trying to give them credit for their research, Sister Barb had brought it up. There was a man here um, by the name of Brother Ernie, and he was brought up in. I'm sorry, Brother Roger, Brother Ernie too. Uh, being a great man of Yah that I've heard many stories about, so I confused them for the moment. But Brother Roger I met, and I met and known him for maybe a year um, just in, I was traveling here. So I didn't know him in a sense that any saint here would know him, uh, a way that some some saints consider him a dad, a father, a mentor, you know. So so to me, he was he was a man of Yah. But when I would come around him, he had such a state of humility of mind, that it would radiate from his being, I kid you not, and it would make you fear Yah in his presence. It was a state of, you know, as I was telling you earlier, humility is not just the way that you carry yourself, but yet it is when you have it, if this is making sense. This man had such a spirit of humility about him that there was nothing, there was no denying it, and there was no one that ever could come against it there was um it was just a, it was just a natural way uh, i don't know how to keep going on and on but humility sister jennifer ephesians 4 1 through 3 remembering remembering erica for those of y'all who know her you know who doesn't uh she doesn't want a name called or she doesn't want credit for things you know humility is a state of mind and this is definitely not saying we all need to be ericas and we all need to be brother rogers just using those for example um for for the individuals who know them go ahead ephesians 4 1 through 3 please i therefore the prisoner of yahweh beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So this person this person doesn't value himself above anyone. I mean not the least, not even a child unto the greatest. There's no value that this individual has. I'm gonna ask you, Sister Jennifer, to read it again, but there's no value that this person has that will rise himself above anyone else. Check out the characteristics again, please read. I therefore, the prisoner of Yahweh, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. You're endeavoring to keep it. You're not being used by the Hasatan to destroy it. 
when you're forbearing and you're long suffering, you're forbearing one another in love, you're not doing whatever you can to destroy it. You're not exalting yourself so that others around you will be destroyed. It's not you and then everybody else. It's no, it's us. It's everyone. It's tribal. Another thought, let's go to Philippians 2, 1 through 3, looking at another characteristic of someone with humility, remembering that word, sisters, as we strive to be that. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Beautiful. No strife in them at all. This is the example he's speaking of. There's no strife in them. There's a giving without expectation. There's a servitude and a lowliness of mind that... Read that very last part about one another. What are you supposed to think, Sister Jennifer? But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Other better than themselves. So no uh, no high opinion of self anymore from this day forward. No high opinion of self. Let's say you at this point, Sister Jennifer, anything before we go on? I think it's very well put. I think it's laying it out beautifully. I'm ready to go on. All right. Hallelujah. I wanted to say this, too, as we focus on humility before we go into false humility. Um, just learning about humility, saints, it's not a 50-50% of the time. Like, you know, I'm going to be using me, for example. Am I humble 100% of the time? Absolutely not. Ask my sisters. They'll tell you. <laughs> so humility being a state of mind is not somebody 50-50 or 60-40 or 80-20. You get it? So not being condemned for not having this nature but striving striving to attain it is what you're doing. It's what I'm doing. We're aiming for it all the time, aiming for the state of mind. It's not momentary. It's a complete change of mind, period, complete change of mind. So it's a practice that you first must begin to practice humility and make it a part of you, especially when receiving correction. Even correction of the word. You know, the word is a very interesting application of truth, meaning when it is preached. It's the application of the truth. So when you're receiving the correction of the word, true humility would actually see your error and make changes without arguing, without excuses, without highly exalting yourself or the reason why you can't overcome or the reason why you're rejected, not meaning that you can't bring forth some of these problems when you're in a deliverance setting. I'm meaning when you're in your prayer closet, you're crying out and you're making changes about yourself, you need to have full view of your error, knowing that the word is for you. It's just an example. So receiving correction being an example of humility. It's a great way to begin to practice and walk in humility, knowing that the word is for you. It's not for everyone else. Okay? So what say you on that note, Sister Jennifer, anything? Receiving correction? I, I wanted to um, to bring up, you know, during a scripture study, Pastor brought up about how, you know, if there's someone in your life who um, constantly sees the old man, they're they're holding you to... Um, the things that you've repented of and you're you're already walking in a new way and there's someone who won't allow you to forget that, then they are despising the spirit of grace. And so I thought about that and I said, but wow, what do we do to ourselves, you know, when we constantly remember the old man and we constantly um, continue to walk in our own ways? We are despising the spirit of grace. And so this rejection subject is really tied into all of that and we can't despise the spirit of grace and walk in a new way it just it can't happen so we have to forget the old man and strengthen our resolve that this is just something that we're going to do we're going to focus on the new man and we're going to focus on strengthening the new man 
So I just wanted to bring that up. Very good correlation you made. And, and, you know, majority of us have always had the opportunity to correct someone or let's just even use the example of a child. And you know how your your heart is reaching out to the child that it's okay. It's okay that you made this mistake, you've learned from it, or, you know, whatever words you may have used for this individual who or this child who, you know, they fell, they fell short, uh, they didn't ace the test, or they didn't um, – you understand what I'm saying. It doesn't matter the age of the child. It's just a mindset that, that there's an automatic failure mechanism for some reason that's in our minds from early age up. So, you know, when you try to encourage that individual, you try to pick them back up, why can't we do, why can't we do that to ourselves, sisters? Why can't we just say, it's okay. It's okay, Ashley, I fell. I will move forward. It's okay, Angelica, I fell. I'll move forward. I say that because she's here tonight if I haven't told you all that already by my side, but understanding that this mindset of self-assurance, this mindset of self-esteem is not an overnight change, but it's a, it's short changes overall, little victories, Pastor called it, right? Little victories. So let's talk about some of the fruit of pride, some of the fruit of, of false humility. So you, you, we painted a short picture or a small picture for you, sisters, about just humility in general, how we should be towards one another and our lowliness of mind that we should have. So the fruit of false humility and maybe bringing some clarity on what it is for any of you who haven't heard about it. Not admitting your weakness or not admitting your dependence on someone for help. There's a pride issue. Trying to be humble when you fear you're actually proud. When you are pretending not to be proud, but you're actually opinionated as hell, you're proud. Don't You, you cannot be humble and be strongly opinionated as hell, always having to express yourself and get something off your chest, expressing your opinion above others in the room, but yet you walk in humility. It's not going to happen. So I want Sister Jennifer, if you can think of some, or maybe you even wrote some down, of, of just practical applications or situations that occur in our life in conversations. I like it how Pastor does that because not only does he cover, let's say he's talking about a spirit of rejection, He's also going to cover some of the lies that rejection would say to your mind. But actually, that part actually really helps you see rejection more so than just the scripture. You understand? So I want to do that, Sister Jennifer, now. Let's use the, the primary example that I have um, attained from this ministry of false humility. I'll give it now. And you all might have heard it before. If you say, no, thank you, I don't need it. No, thank you, I don't want it. No, thank you. But yet... You would need it. You would want it. You would enjoy it. You know, someone tries to uh, bless you with something, bless you with money, bless you with a garment, something that you actually are in need of or you actually love or want it. They're trying to actually bless you. Maybe they came to your home to stay with you uh, for a day, a weekend, a week, or whatever, and you're saying, oh, no, 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 brother. Oh, no, 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 sister. No, no, I don't. No, thank you. That's false humility. They're actually denying this person the, the, the joy of giving to you. It's hard, I know, to say thank you so much, bless you. When you're just beginning to practice humility, it's hard to retrain your mind. I understand that. You know, I was trained that when you go into someone's house, trained by my mother, you do not eat anyone else's food when you go to somebody's house. You don't act like you're hungry and you don't beg for nothing. They offer you for food or water or drink, nothing. The very few times I ever spent the night over at someone's house, I was not and did not dare eat their food. I'm hungry as hell. What kind of training was that? But, hey, at the time, it was discipline and it was right. But when you come into this tribal mentality and you're coming into the body of the Messiah, you, you, you eat what's set before you, right, and ask no questions. So using that as an example, what comes to your mind? Anything, Sister Jennifer? Yes, you know, <clears throat> what comes to my mind is, when we go to someone, we go to um, another sister and we ask for forgiveness, but we spend the majority of our time explaining how they have wronged us. If you're really going to somebody and you're asking for forgiveness, 
all that other stuff really doesn't matter. That's between you and the father. But, you know, spending all this time telling this sister how they have wronged us and really trying to get them to see their wrong in our eyes, that is false humility. There's no humility in that at all. Um, <clears throat> being easily offended, always uh, feeling the need to explain ourselves. And we're just calling it, well, I don't think you have all the information. I just want to explain because I, I don't think you understand. It's not necessary. We're only explaining because we're offended. Um, even admitting um, admitting sin, you know, what we say would be sin, but we don't give the whole picture, you know, telling someone how we wronged them, but we only give a small portion of it because we have a reputation that we have to uphold. So we want them to think that we are humble in a way, but they have no idea the whole picture. They don't even they don't even have a clear understanding of why they should forgive us. And even, you know, in conversation when you're speaking with someone else and you want to you want to speak so much that you only pause long enough to just kind of let the other person stop talking, but you're not even listening to what they're saying. That's false humility. So those are the things that come to my mind. Very good. And I lost the caller. You were only there for a moment, area code 831. If you're still listening, please call back in. Uh, there's nothing on my end. I just saw you drop off. Uh, very good, Sister Jennifer. And, and actually, if you're saying I'm okay when someone comes to you, I'm okay, thank you, you know, I'm okay, you know, hey, uh, Sister Jennifer, I'm really sorry that yada yada happened and that I said this and did this to you, it was really wrong, and Jennifer says, oh, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay, bless you, thank, thank you, bless you, but actually, she isn't using that opportunity to speak back to me or at least uh, admit her hurt. Not saying that you ever have to, that you're always having to admit to someone else you're hurt or exposed to everyone in the ministry who you are or or what's in your heart. Okay, that's not it, sisters. So Sister Jennifer's saying I'm okay, thank you, but really, she's hurt. So she's not admitting a weakness. You know, like uh, maybe you can help me out, sister. Or why why did you say that? Or you know, really help me because the enemy is you know he's really mess messing my mind for the past couple of hours. It's really tormented me um, that you said it. It really actually hurt me, and I don't just want you to walk away with maybe you know without helping me to to understand, helping me overcome. That's not always necessary, but it is important to use that opportunity because when the door shuts and that person says, I'm sorry, forgive me, and you say, okay, but yet you're in torment or for the next six months you're burdened by a spirit, then you should have you used the doorway, sisters. Um, not Remember, each one of these examples that I'm giving, I'm probably going to continue to go back and forth all night saying not to be confused with I'm okay. Like, when I'm truly okay, or Sister Jennifer's truly okay, you know, thank you so much, Sister, I'm okay, bless you, you know, truthfully, that's fine, Sisters, you know. Um, moving on to another one, uh, Jennifer, would you like to do the show on Fourth Night or Fifth Night? Oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, but knowing that Fourth Night, she's prior committed to some radio show, this is a random example, she should have just gave me her preference because now she's unhappy every show that we have to come on on fifth day or, hey, should I bring brownies or chocolate chip cookies to Sabbath? Oh, it doesn't matter. But yet we know there's a preference. There's an underlying preference. We could have just stated it, but we're being false, falsely humble by pretending like we don't have a preference. We're too afraid to say the preference because maybe we won't be humble. Maybe we shouldn't have a say-so. Well, she's giving you a say-so. You want chocolate chip cookies or you want the brownies? Brownies, Angelica says. Thank you. It's a preference. <laughs> Hallelujah. So why can't we just say, I don't need it. No, thank you. I don't like it. Thank you. I need it. When someone's giving something. No, thank you. I really don't like the pink fluffy socks. No, thank you. Like, no, they're not me. Let's laugh about it. 
instead of let me take them, never wear them, and then you're offended or rejected. Or I take them and I got them on my hands in the garden because my hands are cold and you're mad they're dirty. Does that make sense? I know it sounds so foolish, some of the examples I'm using. I'm just kind of randomly coming up with what comes to my mind. But we just don't have good communication. So instead of I don't need it, I don't like it, or thank you, I need it, we're just, you know, we're just abstract. We're very abstract creatures. So you you can even have false humility when you, you know what, I hate, I hate when someone looks at me. I feel like someone's looking at me and, oh, my gosh. But then really in your quiet time, you're like, they didn't notice me. No one even, I walked in, no one even said hi. That's false. Is it you don't want people to look at you or you want to be noticed or you're rejected when you don't get noticed? What What is it? It's a, it's a double-mindedness. Uh, go ahead, Sister Jennifer. I know you got something. I think it's very well put. Um, I think you put it very well. I, I don't have much to add, actually, but it's it's just the way that we have been raised and you know, another way that we have to recondition our minds, um, America has just taught us the fear of being rejected, you know, so we don't tell the truth. We don't know how to be real. And so I believe that that's what the Father wants us to get to, just being honest and being real, because we even have trouble being real with him, and we project that onto our, our brothers and our sisters as well. So I agree. Hallelujah. An- another example is, um, you know, did you did you see what I did? Notice me, you know. Uh, did you see what I did? You know, I actually, I go around to some sisters sometimes, what did you think about the show? You know, what are the goods? What are the bads? Um, so once again, I'm giving you the opposite of, you know, I, I don't intend to go to anyone in pride about a show. I'm actually saying, hey, were you edified? Did this help you? What do you think? You know, I like positive feedback. I like uh, negative feedback. I like questions that maybe we sparked that we didn't answer. Um, So just giving that as an example, you can actually, did you see what I did? Did you notice me? Uh, I'm humbled all thanks to the Father. Oh, all, all thanks to the Father. He's the one that did it. But yet you actually intended when you came to someone to get gratification for what you did, not what the Father did, right? So it's it's about the thoughts and the intention of the heart. I prayed. I fasted. I heard from Yah. The Spirit told me not to be confused, once again, with rejoicing because we can always use the testimonies of, hey, I prayed, this happened, I fasted, What ha- you know, this happened, I heard from Yah, you know, or the Spirit told me. We can always use those things, but when you're actually using them in a way that you want to be seen, I delivered her. I laid hands on her. Did you see how powerful? Oh, hallelujah. You know, it's one of the uh, accusations that that comes against Pastor. You know, you may read it in the comments or see it in some of the videos out there because they believe he's exalting himself. He's actually, who else is he going to talk about? Believe me, if you saw Pastor as a brother at the bare bottom of this whole barrel, he would be supporting the leader of the ministry, Right? If you want to use the word and be pure, exalting the leader of the ministry. If this happened, if I laid my hands on and this happened, it's still an exaltation of the Father. So you always have to judge the heart. Remember that because don't be deceived. Any of you who are watching the videos and you hear that that, that little voice that agrees with the comment you read in the box, you know, that agrees with that, yep, he's exalting himself. Don't be quick to do that. Judge yourself. So if you want to be seen, there can be a false humility about you. And I hope to begin to, uh, not to begin to, but to continue to break this down. Uh, Sister Jennifer, what say you about this example? You know, using pride, pride establishes its own kingdom. So if I have pride, I'll use me because I'm here talking. If I have pride, I can actually place people in rank of importance in my life thinking that that's Yah's importance or that's Yah's rank. Uh, you know, if you're in my clique, then we're, we're it. We're the remnant. We're the core. Does that make sense? So in your heart, you can actually respect pastor and not your husband. You can respect sister A, but not sister B. You know, you can uh, yes, sir, and yes, ma'am to one person, but you can't yes, sir, and yes, ma'am to, to all. 
you have a respect of persons going on, and there's a false humility about that because you're going to be seen with humility amongst those who you give humility to, but you're not gonna you're not gonna have humility in the eyes of Yah across the board for your brethren. What say you? Yes, ma'am. It's definitely a false balance um, in respect to how you look at your um, your sisters and your brothers and your husband. You know, and, and yeah, I hate the false balance, but we talked about reconciliation last week, and I mentioned how, you know, at, at one point I would choose the path of least resistance because I, I didn't want to deal with Sister Hadassah, so I would go and deal with another sister, you know. And, again, I had a false balance. So instead of overcoming that, I chose the path of least resistance. So now I'm free. I'm totally free. But in order to get free, I had to go to the sister that I didn't want to go to. You know, you have to respect your husband. You can't give respect to a man and not give respect to your husband. That's a false balance. So that's something that we definitely have to deal with. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. And, you know, what you do, sisters, um, you can actually be doing it just for you. You know, your deliverance and your deliverance from your situation and your pain, you could totally be doing it just for you. Just, you know, hallelujah, I found the way and the ministry that's going to set me free from all this pain and torment that has occurred and happened in my life. Yes, that's true. But it's not for you as much as it is you seeing what you've done unto the Father. That's the true freedom. I hope that makes sense. Let me say it again like this. What you do, you do for you, for your deliverance, for your freedom, from your situation and from your pain, not because Hadassah's hurt, not because pastor's hurt, my husband's hurt, it's for me. It's what they've done unto me. That's why I want freedom. But what you've done unto the Father, your transgression, your ill will toward your brother, what you've done unto your brother, that is the number one reason why you should desire freedom. And that I know sounds foreign, but I hope if you store it in your mind, you will be able to apply it at some point in time. Because you should, if you love your brothers and sisters with a perfect balance, doing unto them righteously means just as much as your personal freedom. So I want to go to another thought and another scripture, Sister Jennifer. Get ready to go to Luke 17. But, you know, this this society, as we often always reflect and talk about it, and against it, of course, it's our arch enemy, America, Western society. You know, We've thought for so long that we were deserving of thank yous. You know, how many times have you heard, they didn't even say thank you. You know, I watched her daughter, and she never watched mine. I bring dessert every Sabbath. Nobody says thank you. I bring all the food every time we have a snack after Shabbat. I bring all the beer. No one ever brings anything. It's always me. My husband didn't thank me for ironing. I do it every damn day. He didn't thank me for cleaning the house. I just mopped the freaking floor. He walks right across it with his boots on. That's kind of funny and personal, I know, to most of us. Ha-ha. <laughs> Angelica's laughing and the baby's moving up and down. He didn't thank me for dinner. He didn't thank me for cleaning. Man, no thanks from anybody for raising these children. No thanks, really? Ha-ha. <laughs> Oh, I got laughs in the in the chat room. Let's go to the phone line right before we go, Luke 17, sisters. Get ready. Area code 785. You're live, and welcome to the show. Talk to us. Shalom. This is Sister Jasmine. Shalom, Sister Jasmine. Shalom. What, uh, what say you, my sister? Oh, man, we just sitting here with Sister Jasmine and Sister Silky, and we listening in. And, man, hallelujah. Just. Always the Father is bringing confirmation and that second witness to just convict your heart and, you know, cause you to continue to examine yourself and 
I just wanted to tell you, um, Sister Ashley and Sister Jennifer, you know, I appreciate the, the way you all just give those examples, um, you know, those situations that make you like, okay, yeah, I've definitely done that or I've definitely said that, you know, let me stop and look at myself. And so I just appreciate that, um, that part, that aspect of how you all present what you all are bringing forth. Oh, bless you. And you know what? If I can encourage you and any sister that's listening with you, you are doing something that the world refuses to do. Uh, You will receive so many attacks and so much, uh, you know, just opposition in the spirit. And as you continue to overcome, your strength is just going to be overwhelming. I just, I encourage each of you to hang in there. Um, You're going to, you know, self-discovery. Thank you, Jesus. That's the word Pastor used at Bible study. Self-discovery is so painful, and it's it's only meant to (laughs) show you and to make you exactly who you need to be for the kingdom. I encourage you to to allow self-discovery to take place, you know, no matter how painful it is. I encourage your whole household, my sister. I bless you. I thank you for calling in, and uh, thank you for your kind words. Jennifer, what say you? Yes, ma'am. Bless Hallelujah. you, my sister. Bless you, Kansas City Saints and Kansas City Sisters. We love you so much. You all hold such a dear place in our hearts. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you. Um, I did want to share just a short testimony just of um, what's been going on up here as we prepare for the mass deliverance event. Please please do. Go ahead. Okay. We... um. My phone number is the one that's on the flyer for the event, so I've been getting, like, so many phone calls um, from people all over the country just doing whatever they can to get here. And, I mean, every time I see a new area code, I'm just, like, praising the Father because that's just increased. Like, I've got an increase in my faith just being able to witness, you know, the links to which people are going through to get to to be around the Father's presence and his power and receive his healing, you know, that they have that much belief and faith. And so I just want to share about there's a, a mother in California. She doesn't even watch Pastor Dow. It's her son who watches. And he's the one who's coming, who wanted to come for healing. Well, she bought plane tickets for her, herself, her son and her daughter, so all three of them could come and bring him so he can receive the healing that he's seeking for. And so I just was like, hallelujah, you know, like what a mother, like, (laughs) you know, you don't even truly, you know, probably understand everything that you're doing, but, you know, she's taking a step out on faith herself just by bringing him because he believes. So I just want to share that and just, Thank you all again. Thank you for the shout out earlier, and bless you. Oh, absolutely! Don't go anywhere because I gotta, I gotta give credit unto the Father with this really quick for what He is going to do and what He's already done. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hey, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory! <laughs> And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. Sister, Sister Jasmine, if you don't mind, take just a moment to um, share what is going to happen on this Sabbath, this Saturday coming up, uh, November 14th. Just for anyone who maybe has no clue what we're talking about, any information you want to share that we didn't even share. If you want to share address, info, or whatever, go ahead. Please take your time. Okay, yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. So on Saturday, the Sabbath, um, November the 14th, the Straightway Kansas City congregation are going to be holding a healing and mass deliverance service in Overland Park, Kansas Convention Center. And the address is 6000 College Boulevard, um, Overland Park, Kansas, 
six six two one one, and the courtroom is uh, courtroom number four. If you need to get in contact with someone, you can contact seven eight five six four zero four eight three one, and pretty much you're going to be doing the Father's work, doing healing and casting out unclean spirits in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so I pray that anybody that's listening that has a way to come is feeling unctioned by the Spirit to come. You know, do it, do what you can to get there because the Father's presence is going to be there. He is going to show up and He is going to do mighty work in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. And if you don't mind, uh, if one of y'all throughout the show tonight can continue to listen in, if someone needs to call in out there, I'm opening the lines, obviously, to any of you who may have a question for our sisters in Kansas City. I hope that they'll be able to call in and answer you if Jennifer and myself don't know that answer. Uh, Jasmine, thank you. We love you. We love you all, Kansas City. And we can't wait to hear uh, the amazing effects and power of the spirit that goes forth this Sabbath. So call in and share next week. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Hallelujah. Always encouraging to hear from Kansas City. We'll go to the ministry break really quickly, and we're going to come back, as I've said multiple times, with Luke 17. We're going to start. Where are we going to start? Uh, Let's start with verse 7. Go into the ministry break. Be right back with you. Shalom. This is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying this particular broadcast that you're listening to right now. We really appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure we do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you'd like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is... Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. That's 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. PMB number 1 Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. You may leave a message there, and be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. And do please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom. The King is coming. Hallelujah. I had another caller. I was excited to answer you, area code 717, but you dropped off. Once again, not my fault. I don't know if we're uh, we're having issues on this end, dropping callers tonight, or if maybe some of your phones, but uh, please call back in. Um, let's go to Luke 17, remembering some of my last thoughts where, uh, or let's bring up Pastor's thought. He did it on a YouTube video. I'm sure the, the whole world was like, what? But he says, you are not deserving of anything no one owes you anything that's his words no one owes you anything sisters that's interesting truthful hurtful painful right okay luke 17 let's read 7 through 10 sister jennifer 7 through 10 but which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by, when he has come from the field, Go, and sit down to meet. And will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink? Does he thank that servant, because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, 
when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. We have done that which was our duty to do. You mean the dinner we cooked and the ironing and the cleaning and the children and the I watched your daughter but you didn't watch mine and I bring desserts and beer every Sabbath and you don't? You mean that's what we are uh, supposed to do? That when you've done all these things which are commanded you, Say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. I'm going to the phone line. Sister Jennifer, do you mind getting the Hallelujah Scriptures Bible? Do you have it near you or with you? I do not have it near me. You do not have it near you. That's all right. It was, uh, I wanted to, I didn't bring it tonight either, but I wanted to read that in, uh, I don't know. I wanted to read that same text from that, from a different uh, Bible. Let's go 717. Area code, I'm clicking, you ain't working. Area code 717, you're live on Sister to Sister. Who are we speaking with? My name's Elijah Rett. Elijah? Yeah, my dad's Arcelio Rett. I'm new. Well, hi. Introduce yourself hi. or ask any, any questions. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um... Well, we've been listening for about six or seven months, and I don't know. I'm just trying to find out who the most high is. Well, hallelujah. How old are you? Fourteen. You're fourteen. Yeah. All right. Does your, does, your, does your mother and father permit you to call in or to listen in? Yes, my dad told me I could. Hallelujah. Well, all praise be to Yah. Uh, you said Alicia, right? Yes, Alicia. Alicia, beautiful name. Uh, do you have any questions for us tonight? I'm I'm really glad to hear from you, and thank you for calling in. Um, I don't have any questions. I'm just trying to learn all that I can. Well, Hallelujah. I pray that if you have any questions arise in your heart, you know that uh, you can call us anytime. We'll try to help you with anything that is in uh in our knowledge to do or anything that's in the word. Um, you know that uh you know Yeshua Hamashiach Jesus the Christ has paid the price for you, my sister, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well I pray that you continue to listen and that you stay away from all confusion out there as Pastor words it not to eat from all other tables, but as you find a place that you're truly getting answers and it's truly making sense to you, I pray that you and even your father and family are able to stick there and listen and continue to grow. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hope to hear from you again. You will. Hallelujah. She says you will. All right. Sister Alicia, all right, add that add that young daughter, 14 years old, to our prayer list. All right? This ain't Christianity with a... For the list at the door, you write your name on it. We all pray for, for certain. The list is in our heart of those who we love and those who are striving. And you know how the enemy could attack a 14-year-old. So we uplift you, Elijah. Um, thank you so much for calling in. Very good to hear from you. Um, Sister Ashley, right, Sister I have a hallelujah scriptures here. Sister Sophia blessed me and, and dropped hallelujah. it off for me. So I have it. Go ahead and please read the same verses, Luke seventeen seven through 10. But who of you, having a servant plowing or shepherding, would say to him when he has come in from the field, come immediately and sit down to eat? But would he not rather say to him, prepare somewhat for my supper and gird yourself and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you shall eat and drink? Would he thank that servant because he did what he was commanded? I think not. So also you, when you have done all that you were commanded, say we are unworthy servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Hallelujah. You see you see the order of, of this particular individual. I like the I like these words. It's one of my favorites. I know we got hundreds of favorites, right, sisters, in the in the scriptures and in the word. But using the application and understanding from tonight. This individual is done with the with the work. 
You come inside. You know what you do when you're done with all your work? You serve. And then after you're done serving, after all your work, then you eat. But you know what? You don't get thanks. He even uses the words, would you say thanks? I say not. You're an unworthy servant. You're doing what's commanded of you. You're doing what's expected of you, wife, sister. You're not deserving of thanks when you get it. It's a blessing and a benefit. We like to share thanks. I still like to to, uh, uphold the custom of saying thank you, most certainly. But demanding it and expecting it will definitely exalt self. I text her and I called her, but she doesn't ever text and call me, so I'm going to stop. I'm not going to call her anymore. I send her a message on Facebook, but she doesn't send me back, so I'm just not going to do it anymore. Or we grudgingly obey our husband because he doesn't do anything for me. Or is it truly that because what he does for you, you're not able to see because you're in a moment of self-exaltation? What he does for you is not what you do for him. It's incompatible and uncomparable. What you do unto your husband as a servant is not what he does for you. Pastor had an awesome video today. I don't know if y'all are able to catch them as quick as we are. Uh, You know, sometimes we watch them in the dining hall. I say that often. But he says, how fast or quick or successful would the ministry be and straightway be if the women built it and the men took care of the children? That makes me laugh because I know order. Are you kidding me? I think our I think our children would drive them insane, and I think we would hit each other with hammers. There's no way. I appreciate order. Hallelujah. So everything you should do, everything you do, and I think um same caller. Let's go back. Let's go back to her. Hold on. Area code seven one seven. Area code seven one seven. Do you have something to ask or something to say? Um, no. Okay. Maybe you just had, uh, on my end at least, you had number one still pressed in. I'll leave you alone, okay, so you can continue to listen? Yes. Hallelujah. All right. Sorry about that, sisters. I just wanted to pull her up and make sure she didn't have something to ask. Um, so everything you should do is without expectation, sisters. You hear that? Do you know how much we would, uh, how much peace we would attain to in our minds if we would get to the position of servitude? Without expectation, without return, and without payment, this is what I'm doing unto you because no one owes me anything. We owe no man but to give. Can we go, uh, Sister Jennifer, to um, Romans chapter 3, 9 through verse 20. Uh, take it slow if you don't mind. I know in this particular instance, and y'all can go back and read it sometime if it if this show is ministering to you, but it's it's Paul is actually speaking about believers versus unbelievers or Yahoo deems versus Greek speaking Israelites, but let's just apply this to us tonight. Romans three, nine through twenty. If I may add, um, just before I read that, you know, we here in this house, we had a meeting, um, I believe it was approximately a year ago, and we talked about that very same thing, um, realizing that you are an unprofitable servant, you you are an unworthy servant, and your service is just reasonable service. And we started kind of looking at things a little differently. You know, it's a dangerous place when you get to the point of uh, feeling that you are entitled to a thank you or expecting a thank you a lot. I know that in the beginning coming into the faith that I I struggled with that, you know. Well, I did this, and he didn't notice. He didn't thank me for this. And then one day, I remember um, Elder saying, you know, do y'all thank me for going out every day and, and bringing money in? You know, do you thank me for every little thing that I do? And it just shows how immature we can be in our mindset because of, this upbringing, but when we're constantly expecting thank yous and you don't get it, what happens is you grow weary because you think that nobody appreciates you, and growing weary shows that you have a false balance because you're not um, 
actually giving your all in that area because you think that no one appreciates it, not really understanding that the Hebrew way is that we are unworthy servants. We are unprofitable servants. This is just our reasonable service. So I just wanted to add that before I went into Romans. Beautiful. Thank you. This is our reasonable service. What is to be a mother, a friend, a sister, a wife, whatever duty and role you're operating in, it's your reasonable service. It's what you're supposed to do. That's an Eastern thought. That's a that's a scripture that fits right in, in an Eastern world, I'm telling you, not in this Western society. Jesus knows. Romans 3, 9 through 20. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after Yah. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of Yah before their eyes. Thank you for reading that. I wanted to, the only reason I brought that up is because it lumps everyone into one particular category that says they're all the same. You know, what we're guilty of, we're guilty of, sisters. What we've done, we've done. What we said, we've all said. We're just all, we were all in unity against the Most High. So now we got to get there towards the most high. Sister, let me go back to this comment. It was a very good one because I wanted to bring it up. Uh, Sister Melissa, maybe? Melissa Beth, I figure, let's see. Yeah, she said, I thought it was being polite to do so and not respectful to not say it. Now I know. Thank you. It's actually very good that you brought that up because is it polite to say thank you? Yes. But is it not respectful to not say it? That's the question. Because when you're in the body of faith, it's just different. It's different. I'm still going to practice saying thank you. It's something that I'm always going to do because it's in me. But what we don't need is the offense when someone doesn't say thank you. You know, I've given things away early on or, you know, in the faith. or I mean, pull up any example in your mind of the last time that you said, man, she didn't even say thank you. And you see how it just plants that seed and it just builds bitterness fortress. You know, it keeps the offense in you. It keeps that unforgiveness pattern in you. Instead of just walking out a nature of servitude, that I will do whatever it takes to serve the Most High, regardless of anyone's thanks, you're just not expecting it. Right? You're not expecting it. It's still very polite, my sister, to say it. Because it is a custom in this society and a custom amongst all of our minds to say it. Uh, everyone is still, um, you know, we all like to be encouraged. We all like to say thank you. And I know you know that. I just want to bring out your comment because I liked it. But you're actually not viewed as humble humble to Elohim if you feel like you have accomplished something or if you have a, help me out with this, Sister Jennifer, an arrogance in overcoming. Let's say you accomplished a particular uh a particular spot in the face, a particular I finally overcame pride. I finally overcame I, 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 I did this. I prayed and I fasted. This is what I've done. And I finally have seen my reward. Right? That's the wrong perspective. So there's no arrogance in overcoming. It's a true perspective to the Father because only through him and by his blood do you overcome. So even using the example, let's say that a leader or a head of this ministry has much respect for you. That doesn't lump you into being humble by, by association. 
You're not humble by association. You know, me, Sister Jennifer, Sister Angelica, we're on here every night. Angelica's not humble by association. I'm not humble by association. Just because I'm friends with a humble sister named Jennifer. So anything on that note, basically, uh, that you have to become humble, Sister Jennifer, that you're not just automatically uh, humble because you got a humble buddy, a humble friend or sister? Yes, ma'am. It, it's, um, you know, I think we talked about it before about the um, the work that the ministry has done. And we can't just come in and just say that, okay, I'm free because I'm associated with Straightway Truth Ministry. No, you have to work out your own salvation. So you have to seek your own humility as well. You can't just associate yourself with someone who is humble. You're not just going to get it through osmosis. It just it doesn't work that way. So you have to work it out yourself. Yes, ma'am. Can we go? Let's go to an example in the in the scriptures in the Old Testament. Actually, if y'all have ever heard uh, the man by the name of Absalom, uh, I think the Hallelujah Scripture says Absalom. However you pronounce it. Uh, will you go to Second Samuel? I want I want y'all to see this uh, eighteen eighteen, Sister Jennifer. I want y'all to see the the pattern of this man so that you can stay away from it. Basically, you can read about this this man anytime, and and you can see his uh, his lack of humility. You can see his false humility. You can see the way that he portrayed himself to be one way, but he had a deceitful agenda in his heart. Uh, so we just want to show a, a couple of these things. So maybe this will minister to y'all further as we talk about it. Um, Second Samuel eighteen eighteen, please. Now Absalom, in his lifetime, had taken and reared up for himself a pillar, which is in the king's dale. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name. And it is called unto this day Absalom's place. I thought that was an interesting thing that this man did while he was on earth because his um, his agenda was to keep his name alive on earth. And I think about this society and how, you know, education, uh, money, you know, some of the ways or things that make a white society, a white dominating society proud. You know, a reason to be proud was an education you know, you've really arrived, you've really done something when you got a degree or a bachelor degree. But yeah, when you come into the faith, you can lay it all down and say you've done nothing. You can count it all lost as Paul. But this world pushes self-exaltation and self-worship, you know. Do what you want, when you want, ask no one. Uh, you know, you're above the paralyzed. You're above the lame, the blind, the poor. You're above the elders. You're above the niggers. Right, so whatever society or, or lumped up group you were in in America, there was always a self exaltation about you. And so, with this particular uh, eighteen eighteen in Second Samuel, he's exalting his life and his accomplishments, and and actually keeping this monument up as a value on earth, more than more than eternal things, more than as Pastor says, I'm actually doing these things for the young teenage boys so that they will have something to go on something to know. I'm teaching them how to shoot, you know, how to um, box or whatever it may be that you actually want to teach your children. It's not because of you. It's because what they need to know, they need to know more about the eternal than any accomplishment you've ever done. I used to know a sister in the faith who was in the faith for many, many years. Her name is in, unimportant, but the mannerism of the spirit within her is worth bringing up because it comes to mind. She would share with her children all her accomplishments in the world. She would share, share with her children her relationships in the world. Cousins, nephews, friends, boyfriends, past life, everything that she had accomplished and done, which if you think about it, sisters, is absolutely irrelevant to the growth of your children. It matters not that I played college basketball to a son of mine who is two, that I will never teach how to play basketball unless he so desires. He wants to know how to play basketball. I'll show him a few things about basketball. But it's never going to be a drive and a push in me to establish my name. You know, this is what I accomplished. This is what I did. 
Is this making sense, sisters? I hope so. That we, we need to train our children according to the eternal things, according to the faith that lies within us, and not our past. So it actually leads them into the lust of the flesh that we're communicating to them through our vessels as we speak of our, of our past. Let's look at Absalom again in 2 Samuel 15, 4 through 6. 2 Samuel verse, uh, chapter 15, verse 4 through 6. Just one other mannerism about, about this man. Uh, pay close attention to Jennifer's words, please. Absalom said moreover, Oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. And it was so, that when any man came nigh to him, to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. So this man portrayed humility, a, a false humility, a deceitful humility, with an underlying agenda in his heart that actually manifested later on in the chapter. So his heart had another agenda, but his his body was, oh, you know, desiring to be more. Oh, if I could just do such and such better. This is what's coming to my mind. That's why I got tongue twisted. You can actually desire to be more or do better than someone who's assigned to something. You can actually look at a husband and a wife, and you can say, I would be a better wife than she is to her husband. I wouldn't respond that way. You can look at someone who uh, cooks a certain way and say, I wouldn't do it like that. Well, who the hell is I? Who the hell are you? That we put ourselves in so many and we meddle in so many matters that we could actually exalt ourselves, put our high opinions above someone else and say that we would actually do something if we were in the position. So if you desire to be more than the one who's assigned or if you see better, I've been there, that's why I can talk about it, believe me. Oh, I would do this if I was Sister Carol. I'm not saying I've been there, sorry. That was that was sad. In my life I've been there, not with Sister Carol. But it would be wicked to say, if I was Sister Carol, I would do it this way. If I was Sister Carol, I would lead the sisters this way. You know, if I was Sister Carol, the menu wouldn't have bread every day. I told her that before. That's why I could say it and laugh about it. I'm like, Sister Carol, do we need bread every day, Sister Carol? She's like, the saints like bread, Ashley. Yes, ma'am, saints like bread. Hallelujah, we're going to eat bread every day. Hallelujah. Right? I'm just, I'm submitting to her. I'm submitting to whatever's on the menu. Just using that as an example as if we could foresee somebody's position or assignment, you know, uh, you could even look at at pastor and and prejudge all sorts of situations with absolutely no uh, right in the manner, not being a judge at all, not needing to have your nose in any form of his business, but looking at the situation and saying, if I then I would. That's what this man did. He had a really deceitful humility about himself that destroyed a lot of people or or brought a great divide, I should say. What say you, Sister Jennifer? Yes, you know, I believe that there's a a fine line between admiring the characteristics um, that someone possesses in their role and not being content with what the Father has given you and, you know, being overly critical and complaining about that person saying that you would do a better job if I, if I would do it better because I would do this or, you know, in, instead of just supporting them. And so you may just get what you ask for. You may just get what you desire. And then the Father will just show you that, you know, it wasn't something that you were ready for anyway. So, again, there's a fine line between admiring the characteristics that someone has in their role. There's nothing wrong with admiring. But when you're overly critical and you're always looking at that person in their role and you're looking at what you would do differently, that's not your place. It's really not at all. 
Hallelujah. Romans 3.19 says, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, as saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before Yah. Verse 20, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Basically just stating, sisters, we're not, you know, no flesh is justified. We're not justified in our pride. You're not justified in your rejection. You're not justified in your depression. There's no battle. And that's a painful truth because when you're going through it, you really want some sympathy. You know? You, except in the truth of polygyny, you want a little uh, uh, a hug or something, some help from somebody. Help me get past this. This is this is a painful truth. But you're actually not deserving of it. The truth has been presented before you. I wish I could remember Elder Rufus's words because he says it well. You know, hey, when the truth comes forward, you just accept it. You just accept it. It was a long time ago. He was talking on Blog Talk. I know y'all wouldn't remember, but, you know, when it's presented before you, you just accept it. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, buts, kicks about it. What are we what are we kicking for? You have a high opinion of yourself? You better drop it. You better drop it. I'm telling you, it will actually do you a lot of good in overcoming rejection. Because you're not deserving of thanks. You're not deserving of anyone's attitudes or nature to be a certain way to you. You're not deserving of ten best friends or one. You're not deserving of, uh, what's another thing, Sister Jennifer? What comes to your mind? You're not deserving of. What's the, what's another list for me? You're not deserving of, um, you know, you may think that you deserve, I guess, when you're dealing with your children, you know, and, um, yes, they should obey you. But, you know, we have our own ideas of how we think that they should love us. You know, well, when, as they grow up a little bit, you know, they don't want to hug as much. I'm deserving of your hug still. And it's our rejection being projected onto them. So even when you're living in a community setting, you could think that you are deserving to handle your own money. I deserve to, you know, to see my own income. I deserve to see the books and to know where your money's going. I, I deserve all that. No, you don't. You don't deserve anything. You don't deserve any of that at all. And this is a painful truth. You know, this strips everything that we believe. And if we just allow it to really strip us, then we can just start where we need to start. Because this is just its another level of painful truth that we need to realize in order to actually love the new us, to get to know who we really are, and to not despise who the Father has created us to be. Hallelujah. We got one scripture to conclude. One scripture. Sister Jennifer, Psalm thirty five thirteen. How in the world am I gonna become humble? I have been self exalted. I have been so proud, Father. You have just shown me me. Even tonight on this blog talk. How can I be humble? Psalms thirty five thirteen. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothes my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. I humbled my soul with fasting, and of course, praying. But uh, it always seems like it goes back to Mother Bullock's words, huh? Praying, 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 praying and fasting, praying and fasting, praying and fasting. We listen to you, Mom. We hear you when you ain't around, Mom. Shout out to every mother we have. Y'all bless each and every one of you abundantly. Jennifer, that's all I got, my sister. Anything to conclude from your end? Amazingly, we have 26 minutes left, and I'm out of words. I just wanted to encourage the sisters that, you know, to really be thankful that the Father allows things to um, in our lives to show us who we really are, and he allows us things to keep us humble. But sometimes we see the exposure of our sin as the Satan working in our lives, and we don't see it, you know, as, you know, he's just, the Father's just showing me who I really am. So we blame him or, you know, we blame somebody else. But really be thankful 
that he allows these things to take place in our lives so that we'll remain humble. We don't want to walk around here in a proud state. We really don't. So I'm thankful that he just continually exposes me. Thank you, Father. Amen. And and one more example coming to my mind. Uh, you know, when we speak to each other, y'all obviously know, I said it earlier, preaching is a very peculiar application of the word that none of us will ever understand. When pastor preaches, it's completely different from his relationship with us one-on-one or when we, we need his help or his shoulder or, um, you know, when we really need to ask him questions or get some form of direction. Same with any elder. Um, when you need a rebuke, you'll get it. When you need love or comfort, you'll get it. Um, but I think each of us need to learn how, myself chief, to speak to each other, not speaking above each other, not speaking, Sister Jennifer kind of touched on it and brought it up earlier, how, you know, when you're speaking, you're so focused on what you're saying that you're not listening or you're not giving room for someone else to talk. I know for some of you who are more quiet individuals, it's easier for you. But even though you're quiet, it doesn't mean that you're actually retaining or listening or receiving what someone is saying. So I think there's a certain humility that we need in speech one towards another to give each other the respect that we're deserving of when someone is speaking and talking. And there's a, Pastor uses the word, he's the first one that I've ever heard the word condescend from, but it's a really good word because when you speak to a child, you condescend onto their level. And I've, I've actually heard individuals or parents who they don't condescend to their children at all. They speak to them as if they're intelligent, uh, you know, intelligent individuals who got it all together and got it all figured out. It's not so. So your children are deserving of a certain speech or in order for understanding, they have to be spoken to a certain way. And I think it's important for each of us to learn each other. Those of you, those of you who are in fellowships, Sister Carol always says it well, you can't speak to everyone the same way. And it's not because anyone is above anyone. We're all different and we're different personalities. So you need to learn to reach out to to sisters or speak to sisters um, differently. Very different answers, uh, condescending, entreating. Um, And if you don't understand, that means you're probably not doing it yet. Um, So practice, practice listening. Practice observing your sister's behaviors, not with an evil eye, but with the intentions to be their friend and to be their sister. And it means that you can help them, encourage them, bring light to them, bring a smile to them, um, you know, so that when, when any of them come to you for help or conversation, you speak to them where they are or they will speak to you where you are. You can have compatibility, uh, compatibility. But no more phone calls for the night. We love each and every one of you. Uh, Jennifer, anything I'm sorry before we go on that note as I spoke? Are you good? I'm good. Bless you all. Sisters, shalom. Thank you for tuning in. Hallelujah. Let's hear the trumpet and uh, keep that that, uh, mass deliverance, that general deliverance that's going on November the 14th. Um, Keep it lifted. Keep those that are laboring lifted. Um, Pastor speaks of the virtue that goes out from a man, uh, Pastor Corey, in this instance, and how tiring it can be, how many spiritual whammies you can receive, how much opposition you can receive in the spirit. Um, So really keep that group lifted as they do the Father's will. Thank each and every one of you for listening in. We truly do love you. We truly do love you. And uh, special shout-out and blessings to Sister Alicia. Thank you for calling in. All right. Good night for now, and see you next week. And Yahweh Elohim said, It is not good for the man to be alone. 